Roller Coaster Tycoon block sections. Do you use them? Often? Can you optimise them? As players, should we all be using them more often? Let's take a little crash course to figure that out. Although, block section fans will point out, crash course is exactly what we shouldn't need, as the big advantage of block sections is they eliminate the chance of crashes when station brakes fail. As you're most likely aware if you're watching my channel, block section mode is an alternative to the normal continuous circuit mode. Block brakes separate the track into individual sections, with only one vehicle allowed on each section at a time. Every time you place a block brake, you create a new section. This means the maximum number of trains allowed will always be one lower than the number of block sections your ride has. There are two benefits of block sections. They prevent any accidents caused by brake failures, and mean you can use shorter stations for more compact rides because the length of the station only determines how many cars a train can have, and not also how many trains you can have. But block sectioning can lead to low throughput from the potentially decreased number of trains and the longer ride time created by cars waiting each time they hit block brakes. These two reasons are why I, personally, rarely use them. Yet, in real life, they are incredibly common as they alleviate safety concerns. So, should we use them more in Roller Coaster Tycoon? And how can we successfully use them without leaving ourselves with one train coasters? Let's look at the basics. As mentioned, only one train will be permitted on any section at any one time. Here's a version of Crazy Caterpillar, a block sectioned ride available in the Junior Coaster build menu. To highlight where the block sections are created, the blue pieces are block brakes added to the track design. Block brakes automatically exist at the top of chain lift hills, these are in yellow. Finally, the station acts as a block brake to give us five sections. When the ride begins its first test ride, you'll see no train at the end of section 1, the first lift hill. Let's highlight each section in a different colour. It's now a little bit easier to see the four track sections, plus the station to create that fifth section. By default, the ride has three trains, but by changing this to the maximum allowed four, you can see clearly the block sections when you first test the ride, as each train begins in one of the block locations, leaving the first one free so the car in the station can progress. If we had a car in each block section, no section would be free, hence we have one fewer than the number of sections. The top of chain lift hills creates a block section, so in a typical ride design like this one, your first section would be from the station to the top of the lift hill, which is the journey train 1 in blue is currently taking. As train 1 has departed the station, the station block section opens up for the yellow train 2 to enter the station. Block brakes placed just before a train returns to the station, as you see here, are very common on real rides, and help to create an extra section and therefore an extra car for your ride without further breaking down the flow of that ride. It just leaves guests waiting for the station to become available before they can alight. So, with that small, final part of the track vacated, train 3, in white-grey, can travel the third track section. As that happens, train 1 has been stopped by block brakes at the top of the lift hill, that is because the second section still has the green train 4 on it. But as train 3 leaves its original section, train 4 can now progress. And as train 4 has now left section 2, train 1 can move on. Still with me? To create realistic designs, it's best to have your coaster stop as little as possible. This 4 car crazy caterpillar has the ride stop 3 times between leaving and returning to the station. But just once if it's played with the default 3 trains. In this instance, allowing each train to complete the ride in full after stopping at the start of the first chain lift hill. Because no train will be on the track ahead of another train, trains using block section modes won't crash, which is clearly the most appealing aspect to any real-life coaster designer of using block sections. That can be helpful in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, especially as rides get older and brake failures become more common. The advantage of shorter stations can only be maximised if you use the block sections properly. If you don't have any block sections, you'll remain limited to one train no matter how long your platform. So how can you best get maximum trains and at the same time achieve a high throughput? The trick is to basically ensure a train is waiting in the station for as little time as possible, just enough to fully load guests onto the ride. As with continuous circuit mode, the more often the train departs the station full of guests, the more revenue you can expect to earn. Having a block section right behind the station helps this massively, as there will then be a train ready to enter the station and board new passengers as soon as the one ahead departs, rather than having to wait for the next train to complete a section first. 
It's also possible to get more cars on a block sectioned ride than a continuous circuit mode roller coaster. A looping coaster with a maximum length station would give you three seven car trains in continuous circuit mode, but with block section mode, the more block sections, the more cars. Your station will need to be seven tiles long to get the maximum seven car trains, but after that it's down to how many block sections you have. By using different stations for entrance and exit, you can generate far more cars. Take a look at this basic looping coaster. It has two distinct sections of the ride, separated by two lift hills. Just before the exit station, we have block brakes. Then the exit station, then more block brakes, and then the entrance station. These six block sections afford us five seven car trains, and also mean there will always be a train ready to load and depart the entrance station as trains queue up outside the station. I don't believe this is the perfect way to do it though, unless your coaster is exceptionally long. With a regular length coaster and maximum length station in continuous circuit mode, typically a train would be ready to return to the station as one is leaving anyway, negating the need for these extra trains. The extra block sections also slow down the progress of the ride, meaning trains may end up waiting longer than necessary in the station, and so delaying the boarding of the next train, but it is something to keep in mind and utilise where you see fit. The optimal way to play it would be to have track sections which take an equal amount of time for each train to complete, which should be similar to how long a train needs to load guests at the station. That way, when a train is ready to depart, it should be free to do so. But that will require some time, patience, trial, error, and some roller coaster tycoon experience. Finally, do block sections affect stats? Back to Crazy Caterpillar. As a four train block sectioned ride, we hit 5.46 excitement. 6.23 intensity and 5.16 nausea. With a two train block sectioned operation and trains therefore able to flow more freely along the track, the stats remain the same. And in continuous circuit mode, exactly the same stats. Even the ride time remains the same, which is a bit of a quirk because the four car block section mode definitely takes longer due to the extra stops the train has to make. And that's block sections in a fairly large and hopefully not too confusing nutshell. Given the added complexities of building with block sections and what is usually a reduction on throughput, in scenario play I typically opt for longer stations and regular safety checks to reduce the risk of crashes. This makes a crash due to brake failure fairly rare and in any case parks and rides can recover from the effects of crashes within just 4 months. If this was real life, then the safety of my guests would have to be taken much more seriously, but in Rollercoaster Tycoon, if we kill a few guests due to crashes in very rare instances, well. It's only a game.